All right, they're going into the match. Let's see, let's not forget to turn this off, of course. And let's do it. Now, does Silek have sound is the question. I don't believe he does. I don't believe he has sound. Oh, he might be turning it on. Oh, yes, he is. He is, he is. Okay. There he goes. Alright, thank you, Silek, for noticing that he had no sound. He's probably one of those players that prefers playing without sound. Okay, so it looks like he's bringing... Uh, Dismas is bringing control with Leper, which is, you know, interesting, not gonna lie. And, he's, and Silek is bringing the Occultist here. This is a very weird variation, because I've seen Doggy as position 4, I've seen Man at Arms... Well, no, I've seen Grave Robber as position 4, I've seen Antiquarian. But Occultist is a very interesting position 4 for this team, because... He's not really uh, like the Antiquarian player, probably that can kind of move back, but he also does have a lot of stress output. That is a very big Holy Land crit. That is a humongous Holy Land crit. That that can always happen when you knock the somehow knock the Crusader back to position to position three. That was probably not the best play to actually pull the Vestal. Not gonna lie, the best play probably would have been to do something a little different, but. In terms of matchup, this is very good for Silek. This is very good for Silek because there's a leper against double protection on the front line. It's always the very big heels of, of that flash one. So this is honestly completely fine for Silek, even if he gets a, quite unlucky a few times. So that's still not enough damage coming through to that abomination, so he gets to stay alive. This leper does have the snuff, but he also has a, a very suspicious net, which can be very useful against this Flagellant. Actually, I think he's gonna have to use it against this Flagellant, because the Silex Flagellant is actually um, set up with uh, with the Reign of Sorrows, as well as, the, um, as well as the Hemlock, so he cannot let that Flagellant stay in position 1 by any means. He definitely needs to, to use that. There's gonna be a Dazzling Light coming onto that Occultist, probably a very good play, just denying that action. So this this is not exactly great for Silek because he doesn't have reclaim on his um, on his flagellant, so he can't really use him as a healing character. One of the things I thought could be really good about having the occultist as a uh, fourth character is that he actually counts as a healer. You know, he's the slot machine. You can also use Stitch, Stitch and Embrace, so he's absolutely crazy in terms of heal potential. But if, if you would pair it with the regen as well, it would be super difficult to kill um, any character, really. It would be super difficult to kill any character. But of course, the Occultist is stunned, and the uh, Fire one doesn't really have um, a healing trinket. I mean, the healing ability in the form of the Reclaim. He has the Reign of Sorrows instead. Which, uh, it's a way of playing this team. It's the very old way of how you would actually play this team. So... Take it, take it as you will. Me personally, I prefer to just give the fine one no rain of sorrow. Just give him the reclaim and um, not take him off as well. Just make him like a real support for this team, because putting the A bomb and the flash one together can be kind of messy sometimes in terms of positioning. That's just going to be a finale right there. So a finale after one transformation has been dropped. So that's finale gone by round two. But um, now the question is, who actually wins this? And if I were to place my bets, I would have to say that Silex, Silex's position might not be looking too good, but it's actually a lot better than you might think, because he did, still did get one transformation horror through, so as long as he doesn't get too unlucky to get Holy Land scritted again, uh, he should be technically pretty much fine at this point, because that Flashbolt is going to be near impossible to kill, Now Man Arms is going to be near impossible to kill, and once that occultist can get back into position 4, which, let's be honest, it's probably not going to happen, because after this stun, the, the flange one's going to move back to position 1, and then the leper is just going to clear. He's going to, like, knock the flange one back, and he's going to clear the corpse as well, so we are probably going to see this occultist being perma-stunned by that pestle. But stopping this man at arms is a whole different story, because it's going to be very difficult to actually just stop him. Of course, stunning blows are a way of doing that, but in terms of damage, you're not doing very much, and they're not confirmed to stun him forever. 
so balance are gonna keep dropping like eventually eventually it would be very interesting if Dismas actually manages to to take this match back also Dismas is not using Dismas quite suspicious right <laughs> He actually moves to position 2, which is a very good play by Silek, not letting that um, uh, that the Leopard get any free damage with the Purge, if he does want to do Purge to clear the corpses. Which, at this point, taking taking damage as that, uh, as that Flatulent doesn't really benefit him in any way, he doesn't really want to take damage right now. However, like, the biggest... But the most important thing here is that Dismas has absolutely no damage output other than Harvest. Harvest is by far his biggest damage output right now. So as long as uh, Salak can prevent Harvest com from coming through and can prevent from the odd one shot uh, reaching his uh, flagellant and then not being able to react with a heal, he should be absolutely fine. So he does like the absolute most correct play here, which is just going for really high value tentacles and that Chester is just feeling horrible. Right now he has he has horror on him from the he has like how much horror is it? Like maybe 40 horror on him from that uh, just from that tentacles alone, which is gonna be doubled because he used finale. As well as still a bit of horror from that abomination, as well as taking damage from the bleed to actually knock him to death door most likely. So that Jester is going to be feeling really, really bad really, really soon. Now it's just a matter of what does Salak want to go for? Does he want to drop another Rain of Sorrows, make him feel even worse? <laughs> or does he want to click the stun character first and then maybe adapt and potentially like even use a heal on uh, with his Flash Hunter? You know, anything of the likes. Let's see, that Flash Hunter is probably going to get stunned right now. Most likely, so that is going to be a stun. Dropping the flash will be below 40% HP as well. So he just got a bit of extra crit and a bit of extra, a bit of extra, you know, abilities to choose from. Now, what would be an amazing play for Dismas to do, though he doesn't see it, would be to actually use the Vine Grace on that um, on that Chester, which would actually. You know what? Remove all the horror and also get him very far away from reaching that store. That would be an absolutely amazing play uh, right now. Oh, no bleed on either character. That is so unfortunate. That is so unfortunate that that happens. I'm gonna have to say that right now he probably wants to go for Bella. Not, um, not a Reign of Sorrows, because if he goes for a Reign of Sorrows, he subjects himself to, to getting death load. If he, if he does go for that Reign of Sorrows, he might just take a chop to the face, it might do enough damage. Oh no, the 90 miss! The 90 miss! Oh, that really sucks, that really sucks to see. There's a bit of extra um, stress in the form of that bark though, so not the end of the world. Everything's looking just fine in the stream, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Alright, all good, all good, she. So that is going to be a dazzling light onto that man arms, very likely to get that stun, but... Do you just Reign of Sorrows here? I, I don't think so. I, I don't think you just Reign of Sorrows here. Even though it's going to be like really close to killing that Jester, you do not want to suffer a death blow at this point, especially because he doesn't have the the extra 12% death blow resistance that a Last Breath Color could offer. So it's it's really risky. It's really risky not to go for a, for a heal right now. Really quite risky. Of course, he, he can still be stunned, uh, even though he has the extra stun resistance. Ah, oh, that's a focused. Oh, no. Well, it's not the greatest virtue for this Crusader at, at this point, but... No, he's gonna, he's gonna heal that 40% debuff on that, uh, on that leper. But honestly, at this point, he just dropped the Reign of Sorrows, because he can't get the one-shot right now, and the, and the Jester is gone. Yeah, the Jester is absolutely gone, and that Vestal is taking at least the Blight. She uses the Bleed, which, you know, happens, but she's taking the Blight as well, so that is, that is honestly great. That's gonna be a chop on the Manor Arms, of all characters. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. He doesn't want to give the Flatulent free healing, and then actually, like, uh, still clicking and getting out of that store. So, if I were this Flagellant, I would... Um, how much stun resist does he still have? Probably only 55 right now. 
So, you know, at this point, you have to realize that you're going to get stunned by the Vestal. But you have a lot of decisions to do. You have a lot of decisions to do. Now he actually goes for the heal on the Occultist of all characters, not on the Men in Arms. I wonder if that's the best play, because he had a, he had a few ideas he could have gone for. He could have um, either just gone for another Tentacles or a pull on that Vestal. You know, a pull would have probably killed her in terms of horror. Uh, as well as, you know, putting her to position 2, that would have been... Wait, no, would it pull her to position 1 or position 2? Because it would get rid of the corpse. So would it pull her to position 1 or position 2? I actually can't remember, in terms of, like, circus mechanics. I actually can't remember if it would pull her to position 1 or 2, but probably position 2. Yeah, probably position 2. That's actually just gonna be a purge right there, which is... Um, is intended to give uh, this as a chance just to go for a stunning blow on that occultist most likely yeah there's a stunning blow so that's a very decent amount of damage but no there's no stun the stun resistance yeah 60 percent stun resistance right now you know what if i'm silac i just go weakening curse on that vessel right now just get the death blow just just get the death blow no he actually doesn't have weakening curse he has the vulnerability hex but uh, honestly they're they're the same in terms of stress output, so just just get that kill, and now he should be pretty much fine. Pretty much fine. That's going to be a chop, so that's probably going to do enough damage. Does this Crusader have that Zealous? We don't know. We don't know really now. If he doesn't have that Zealous, a guard is reasonable at this point. If he, if he doesn't have that Zealous. I, I couldn't see. He doesn't. He doesn't have that Zealous. So he might just go for a Defender right now, and even if he breaks that stun, the flagellant is going to go back to position 1, though the flagellant doesn't really have reclaim. It doesn't really have reclaim, so if he wants to heal that, that occultist, he's going to have to heal by himself. But, yeah, he's definitely going to be able to do it. Definitely going to be able to do it. He actually moves to position 2 again. That is very interesting how Psylocke likes moving his, uh, his flagellant to position 1. Usually when I pick the flagellant and I have to move, I just think position 1. And, and just go ahead and do it. So he's probably gonna have to heal his um, himself with the occultist at this point, most likely. I would say. Oh, he suffers. <laughs> he suffers the zero. Oh, that is no good. That is not good. That is not very good for Silic right now. That's not a death blow, but it's darn close. Darn close to a death blow. Also, that stun. The stun. The stun. The stun. So now he's just gonna go ahead with the Punish, gonna get that Bleed and that Blight, so pretty much half the Leper's HP gone uh, between the Bleed and the Blight. Abusive plus damage, minus accuracy, but plus damage. That is quite strong. How many heals does this uh, Flashlight still have? I believe he still has three Exsanguinates and two Redeems, which... No, I mean, he's, he only has one Redeem left, total. But I do think he still has three Exsanguinates. The thing is, he can't bleed the Crusader anymore because he went virtuous. He can, but it's a 5% chance. So, definitely do not expect that to, to just happen. Now he's gonna drop the second redeem, keep that, um, keep that occultist alive, so it's... Once again gonna be a bit more difficult for this leopard to just get the kill. Oh, 10 accuracy, 10 crit onto that Leopard. Giving the Leopard 10 crit with a, an ability, that is, that is actually quite insane. That's gonna be a stunning blow crit. We are probably just gonna see, you know, a Bellow to react to that, most likely. I'd say that's the best move at this point. It's really his uh, best and only play. Oh, Crusader is resisting, resisting that, uh, that Bellow. You know, going virtuous gives you an extra 25% resistance, so right now his bleed is at 95. That's kind of brutal. That is kind of brutal. Oh, he resists the stun again! This occultist is so fortunate! He's resisted two 80% stuns at, uh, at this point, I believe. That is really good. That is really good to have happen. That's gonna be another bellow. It's definitely not gonna be enough against the leopard to stop him from doing enough damage to the occultist, but it's gonna stop him from doing too much damage to the uh, to the flagellant at least. Oh that's a big heal. Oh that's a big heal. 
that's a 20 now, so the fact that that um, occultist managed to survive the 25 and the 40 after healing for zero, definitely gonna be rough. Oh, look at the buffs on that leper though, he has plus 30% crit right now, what is this madness? The Crusader just keeps act out gifting the, the leper buffs, because every every buff he gives is 10 accuracy, 10% crit for 4 rounds on, on the leper, so that, those buffs last pretty much forever. He has so much crit right now, plus 30% crit, he might just get 2 crits. He doesn't have revenge, but yeah, even without revenge. Can you imagine if he had revenge and like... Um, two crit trinkets or something. Yeah, even with all that crit, he's still not doing too much damage. Yeah, you wanna go for that punish. Definitely wanna go for that punish. So, yeah, that leper is dropping very soon. Very, very soon. That's gonna be quite difficult for for Dismas to deal with. So even though Dismas got quite lucky to kill that abomination early, and the soul is getting the virtue, this is just a pretty bad matchup to, to try and win. Yeah, this is a really bad matchup to try and just uh, to try and just win, honestly. You know, being against all this protection, like the leper, even with <laughs> extra thirty percent crit, he's doing four damage with a hue. That is that is just laughable. Now Salak has to think: what does he want to do? What does he want to do? He might go for a guard, he might just ignore his occultist from now on. No, he just goes for a guard. Keeps that uh, occultist alive and well. That leper almost dropping to 0 HP. And let me tell you, a punish is... A punish crit almost kills the leper at this point. It's gonna be a purge though. So, knocks the flagellant back. Alright, alright. Not sure if you see what I'm seeing, but once this flagellant moves back to position 1, there is an idea for for Dismas here to potentially just take the badge like right back into his favor. He is gonna have to be quite lucky, and it's gonna involve a stun, of course. So yeah, it's of course that stunning blow onto the flagellant does just enough damage, but he doesn't get the stun. Of course, the flagellant gets an extra 20% resistances when he's at death door. It's kind of his virtue, really, uh, when he's at death door. So. Salak so, does survive, and now he can just drop an Exsanguinate. Most likely on that... Um, yeah, he is gonna drop an Exsanguinate, right? I don't really believe him not to. So, yeah, he's gonna drop an Exsanguinate there. 85 to hit. Obviously doesn't get the bleed. I mean, it's a 5%. If he got that bleed there, match would just be over on the spot. But um, not getting that bleed. Definitely a bit better for him. Oh, 15 damage! <coughs> Why would you do that, Leper? This Crusader has been buffing you up again and again and again, and you do something like that. Evil, evil Leper. That is just evil. Okay, we're gonna see a Bellow first. And whichever character he chooses to use, um, he doesn't have Weakening Curse, he has the Vulnerability Hex, which is honestly kind of good. Having the Vulnerability Hex instead of the Weakening Curse, I guess it reduces dodge. But normally I just go for the weakening curse. So yeah, that's doing a lot of stress to whichever character it drops onto. 30 stress, to be fair. To be exact, I mean. So that mana was like it just Dismas just isn't doing enough damage with uh, with his abilities, unfortunately. This is just the fate of the of the Lamper, really. It's gonna be another act out, only a bit of stress this time, not hitting him for a third of his HP. A third of his HP, just absolutely crazy. Of course he only had one damage debuff this time. He's gonna heal himself for 7, alright. That's not gonna be enough to stop him from dropping to death's door again, but it's not the end of the world, so that's gonna be a lot of stress being added on. That, that leper is pretty much gone once he acts. He's not, he's not. He's gonna be dropping to 197 stress and 0 HP. But he is quite close. Yes, he is gonna have to use that solemnity. Oh, the sunny boat that's just enough. And also causes that cultist to go quicker than the last from dropping to zero HP so many times. 
and he goes hopeless. You know, you might just go for a guard right now. Does he do 5 damage with that? He does. He is he is under 40% HP, so I think he does still have that uh, crit and damage bonus. So now this is this is really quite rough. We're gonna we're still gonna see a defender just keeping that occultist alive. And you just have to believe that round one goes for Salak, because even with that virtue it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. And it's round 16. It's gonna be a stunning blow. Oh, it doesn't even do enough damage. It does get the stun, but it doesn't do enough damage. Oh well. Oh, what do you do? What do you do? So between uh, between the vulnerability hacks, oh, especially if it gets a crit. If it gets a crit, it's definitely gonna drop into zero, and then it's just gonna be a bellow, and uh, that crusader is gonna be a bellow away from just death. Absolute bad. So quite rough, quite rough for this. For for, for this was here. He kind of counterpicked himself by uh, picking that team. Considering he banned the Halo Comp, he had like a pretty nice chance of going against one of these um, tanky stress teams, and he just uh, went up against them. It's gonna be another stunning blow. Oh, he might get that stun, but oh, he doesn't even get that stun. Come on, Salak, finish it right. We finish with a punish. You want to see a punish? Finish the match. Oh, he's gonna finish with a scream. All right. I guess finishing with a melanox spell is also great. Right. Fight to the last breath, as we say. Well, he tried. He definitely tried. All right. Let's go have a look at the teams again. So that's gonna be this team gone from Silac. So. This team cannot be picked, so you can either pick the Silex Special, which the Vessel definitely doesn't have to be in position 1, or he can pick the, the Grave Robot team. So, let's just wait and have a look, see what they do. I am just gonna grab myself some water while they, while they pick their characters. So, yeah, I'm just gonna go grab some water, I suggest you do so too. I've already finished my second bottle, so I'll be right back. I have returned. I think the players must be almost ready. I believe so, at least. Yeah, probably almost ready. Get you out of here. No peeking. No peeking into the teams. <laughs> no, you don't. Alright, Dismas, I'm just gonna drop you over to gaming so you don't peek into Sound Extreme, alright? <laughs> Let's hope you don't mind. Just gonna drop him out for, for just a second there. Time out, really. <laughs> and we're just gonna gonna wait and see. Wait and see what the players do. So whenever they want to start, they are free to start. I do believe that they know that as well. Some voices in, in the voice text chat. Yeah, actually, I should drop Salex deck into into the tournament decks thing. Alright, uh, let's see if I can find his deck. Save it as this, right? Alright, there we go. This is Silex deck. players want to begin, they are free to. I think 
Alec is just going over some stuff and um, we should be through very, very soon. Uh, is my voice alright? I think it should be. No one's complaining. It's usually a good sign. It's either a sign they've given up, or a sign that everything's fine. Uh, that's a desync, those characters are good. Alright, both players, please do bring the same teams, I'm gonna have to ask them. Yeah, that's a desync, those characters are uh, Bring same teams, please. Once he acts, desync. Believe me. Bring same teams, uh, please. Alright. Yeah, it's just gonna be a, des a desync right now. Yeah, he surrenders, but um, he once he acted, uh, the desync would occur. That that kind of just happens like every so once in a while. A character just pops out to a different dimension or it just goes crazy. Just decides, hmm, no, I don't want to start in position for this round. And the Grave Robber moves forward. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's just wait for both players to start again. Very good banners by both of them. I, I do like them both, not gonna lie. I do like both their banners. And alright, here we go again. Hopefully no desyncs this time, this time. So it looks like Dismas is going again with the same team. He didn't learn the first time. Is the flat one supposed to be in position too? Wasn't he in position one? Was there a desync again? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, after the first action, we will see if there was a desync. Because a character can't just start like in the other position. Is it that flat one's in position one? Maybe he started in position 2 because he thought he would bring the leper again and didn't want to get yeeted to the back as his, uh, as his flashlight. That is very interesting. That is actually very interesting. He did actually start in position 2 with that flashlight. Alright, I, I like it. Um, he's probably just gonna drop a fella here. Yeah, there's a dodge on that, uh, on that jester. Of course, Bellow, even without the trinket to get more accuracy and debuffs, is still pretty good. I mean, 100 accuracy against characters that have like 5 dodge is always gonna hit. And usually you'll see that damaged characters are gonna have very, very low debuff resistance. So he fails the 45% stun there onto Salek's um, flash one, so that's really, really good for, for Salek. He is still using the Quantum of Absolution and. Um, and the hemlock. So this time he doesn't hit the chest or that 55. Not sure if he did last time, but yeah. Oh well. Yeah. I wonder how both players are gonna adapt. Of course it's gonna be a little different for Salak here because he's gonna have a grave robber instead of um instead of a occultist, but this is still extremely difficult for for this here to just burst his way through. Yeah, it's going to be a double bleed in front of that harvest, that is really good value. Yeah, that Grave Robber is having the Monkey Spot and, um, and the Satchel of Dirty Tricks, so she has really high accuracy for that uh, Panic Dart. She's pretty much not going to miss anything, except for maybe the Jester. So yeah, the difference between having an Occultist and a Grave Robber, of course Grave Robber can't heal, but she's also more difficult to kill, like 99% of the time, and also it lets it lets Silac actually put his um, his flashlight in position too comfortably because even if he gets pulled, you can you know, he can always use Shadow Faith, so that's pretty nice. That was a pretty nice idea. He just got stunned again with his. Um, Wait, did he resist the stun or something? What happened there? I saw that Vestal get a crit, but where did she get the crit? Did she get a crit on the on the flash one to not get the, the stun? If he has two stun trinkets, that's impossible. That is totally impossible. I, unfortunately, I didn't see what happened. <laughs> I was drinking some water. I couldn't look. 
Okay, oh, he's actually gonna drop a guard here onto that uh, abomination. That's an interesting play. That's quite an interesting play, not gonna lie. It is gonna make, I mean, this this Chester Harvest is gonna be coming through again and again, so that's not really too good for Sally because Jester Harvest is doing a lot of DRT, even without the blood red coin. And it's still doing it like relatively reliably, especially against the uh, flatulence. Which, you know, the flatulence doesn't mind taking damage, but I mean, take too much and he won't be able to heal eventually. <laughs> the curse of the snuff. <laughs> yeah, say goodbye to that um, to that accuracy, Mr. Mr. Lefer. So misses that jester again, not using the command buffs. Which, honestly, it's quite reasonable because he either wants to be guarding or using Bellow at this point. So that is going to be a stun there, an 80% stun. You know, I'm going to have to be honest with you, this isn't looking as good for Salak as it was before. At least, not, um, not so far. Because he has been quite unable to stop that, uh, that Chester from just being crazy. Honestly, if he goes for a slam right now... Uh, it's, it's not looking too good for him. <laughs> he just moves forward. <laughs> oh, that is that is such a Psylocke play. He just moves forward, in, like not even passing, not 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 slamming. He just moves forward because, well, obviously, if he if he slams that Crusader, he gets he gets finaled again. That that worked well for him last time, but seeing how much he's trying to protect his. Um, his, his uh, abomination this time. I don't really believe he wants to go home uh, without getting to two transformations right now. So of course, what what uh, Sonic is going to do here is he's just going to get uh, he's just going to let the leper use his hue, and then he's probably going to go to redeem to stop that that blow from occurring. So yeah, it's probably going to be a hue, very likely to just uh, do enough damage. Yep, there it is. There it goes. So now Salak is just going to click his, um, his flash one, and he's very likely just going to drop a redeem right here onto that abomination. So that's a very big heal. Gauntlet of Absolution has a tendency of healing for a lot. So yeah, that's a lot of pressure gone. And the question is, if you're Dismas, do you keep using Harvest? Or do you just move forward with Turk Stab now to try and get the finale? And I honestly think he's doing the correct play. Just trying to drain this, um, uh, drain this flatulent of some some of his uh, absolutely insane amount of healing. Not to mention that he should want to finale the flatulent, not the abomination. Like if he finales the flatulent, uh, that's really good for him because he has to heal, deal with him at the end of the match, and that's not too easy. Also, he should he also wants to finale the the grave robber. He really wants to finale everything. This uh, <laughs> this jester. He hasn't used accuracy though, has he? Even with that um, that grave robber in the back line, he hasn't used accuracy. He hasn't deemed it necessary. So we're probably going to see like a battle battle by round eight or something crazy like that. Uh, Salak is not enjoying this match too much, too well. The way it's going, I, I I can see that. Let's see what he decides to do. What does he decide to do? Just keep bellowing, keep getting that stress, you know, eventually you're gonna do enough stress that the opponent starts acting out, and you're gonna be pretty much fine. Really, the only big damage source, apart from the odd um, leopard doing lots of damage, has been this harvest from that chest. That harvest is just scary. Of course, this was played very well, immediately um, stunning that abomination right when he got into the match. So no transformation, no slam going down, so that really, really helped uh, Dismas to take the match at least in, into a decent place so far. What does Silac do here? At least that Crusader doesn't go virtuous, he just tries to focus down that Crusader, because once that Crusader is gone, things are going to get a whole lot easier for him, that's for sure. So honestly, I usually, I'm usually an advocate for you know spread the pressure with uh, with the panic darts, but if he just gets this crusader out, you just have to see it as a win condition uh, right now. So if he gets another crit on the crusader, he's gone. He's done so, absolutely done so. Okay, that that um, that might just be a death blow with the sixty. That might just be a death blow. It doesn't. It doesn't death blow. 
he stays alive. But of course, Tesmus can still go first next round, so he might still just get the death blow as a as a dirk stab. Or, or, and this is very important, he might get a finale. He has three finale buffs, I believe. I believe he has three finale buffs, so he's doing 14 to 25 damage. Probably only 13 to 22 against his flagellant, so... Does he get the finale against the flagellant? Probably not, so instead he's just gonna go for a dex stab. Okay, he failed the 60, but he did get the 70. So now his finale damage has ramped up to 16 to 29, which is a very big amount. It's a very big amount. For finale buffs, you, you, you can kinda go crazy. You can pull off some crazy amounts of damage. And this is not looking too great for Silent, but it's really anyone's game at this point. It really is anyone's game at this point, because He's gonna have to take out that uh, that flagellant. Of course, Salak isn't gonna let himself go down without a fight as his flagellant. And as long as that grave robber just stays alive in the back line, I mean, she's about to kill that crusader. I'm I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure she's about to kill that crusader. So I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happens. He decides to click first. That's probably a good idea because once the once the crusader drops to zero HP, he's gonna. He's gonna be taking a bit more stress from that Panic Tars, because Panic Tars probably wouldn't drop him to zero right away. So like this, he just confirms that that Crusader is very likely gonna get killed. That, that was of course if uh, if the Crusader acted first, which Dismas isn't gonna give him that for free, obviously. So who does he Panic Tars right now? Probably still the Crusader, right? No crit! So the Crusader is... No, he's not gonna stay alive, he's gonna take just enough. 8 plus 33% is 11. 11 plus 5, that's 16 stress, that is just enough stress. So very good that he picked the Satchel of Dirty Tricks, giving him an extra 10% stress to ultra. And now he, get, he can go for a big redeem! He doesn't have the Gauntlet of Absolution, but that's still a very big redeem. The turns uh, worked out really well for him there. He got to go first. And now it's gonna be quite difficult because this this leper has to get like a chop crit right now if he if he wants to use the finale this round still. Uh, he might he might be able to use the finale this round still, but we'll see. Does he? The question is, does he still win if he uses finale on this man at arms? Is that a, is that the winning move? Does that grant him the win, or does it not? Okay, that is going to be one affliction, and maybe also an affliction on that um, on that vestal. We're going to have to see. No, not quite. She's not quite going to be afflicted just yet. So another bellow is going to be needed. A bellow or something else. Oh no, she has two rounds of horror. So that's pretty good. Uh, drops that <laughs> that uh, men at arms by one HP. So one step closer to to getting that. Um, to getting that finale through, but I really doubt he, he goes for, for that. That Chester right now has five finale buffs? Does he have five finale buffs? It's round six, he must have five finale buffs. How much the damage ramp to? How much does it ramp to right now? Probably like 19 to 30 plus. It's it's amazing how much damage it does at this point. Of course, Men Arms had a bit of protection, so less. But I'm gonna have to completely disagree with actually just using Finale on the Man Arms because Grave Robber's alive, Flagellant's alive, Flagellant still has three Exsanguinates, I'm, and this Leper is going down very soon with, with these crits from the Grave Robber. I'm gonna have to completely disagree with that, uh, with that Finale choice. You know, because he wouldn't go first this round, but the flagellant was dazed. He could have gone for a Dirk Sab on the flagellant and then finale if he it, if it felt like he, had an, he didn't have enough damage. He could have just gone for something like that. Of course, um, the, the Grave Robber can still use um, Panic Dance from position too, so that's pretty good for, for this Grave Robber. Unfortunately, doesn't hit the Jester. Even with an 80, that um, that hit on the Jester would have been very helpful. But unfortunately, it doesn't go through. Quite, quite unfortunately. Of course, because Dismas hasn't used a Battle Ballad yet, this might just be a dodge. Yeah. 
that's just a dodge because this grave robber I believe is sitting at uh, probably like 53 dodge or something like that. Maybe less, maybe like 49 dodge. Yeah, probably 49 dodge. Let's see what he does. Especially because of that crit. The crit gave him an extra 10 dodge. Uh, let's not forget about that. Let's not forget about that crit. Yeah, he should be sitting at 49 if I did my math correctly. Yeah, there he goes. He's at 49 of those two trinkets, so that's gonna be a bit of stress. No act outs. No act outs. If if the um, if the leopard just says something really dumb to that vestal, she's gonna be one one heartbeat away from a heart attack. Uh, she does heal some stress with that though. She does heal some stress with that stunning blow. Now don't forget that because he actually got that stunning blow. Um, not stunning blow. I mean dazzling light. Because he actually got such a big hit with that dazzling light, he might just be able to. Um, how do you say? He might just be able to heal for a lot. Also, this must went for a play there, which was gonna be just chop and, uh, you know, stun to get rid of that round, uh, the final transaction. And then if he had done a chop for 14, which he could very well have, even without a, a crit, he might have gotten a death blow right there immediately. Especially considering that this final one doesn't have the extra death blow resistance. So it would have been uh, a 55% chance of getting a death blow. And if that had happened, I would say this match would be quite unlikely for Silek to win. Quite unlikely. So that pass on the leper, even though it was quick, we, we barely got to, to see that pass actually happening. It was it was fatal potentially. Potentially fatal because having still two examinates left, this is gonna be quite difficult for um for Dismas to to actually just win. Of course this would be a lot better if Silek hit one of like the four Reign of Sorrows he threw at that Jester. <laughs> They're like a 50-50 and the last one was like an 80% chance. Okay, that's just gonna be a Solemnity. A crit heal from the Solemnity would have been terrifying, but uh, no no crit heal. Of course, there's still a lot of DOT on that lever. That Solemnity is not really saving him too much. It's gonna be a Dirk Snap doing just enough damage to drop him down to under 40% HP, I believe. Yeah, it's gonna be a death blow. Say goodbye to your Vestal. And that's gonna be enough stress to afflict the Chester as well. Paranoid, a little extra dodge, that's not too bad. But it does reduce your damage by 25%, so that's not very good either. Let's see what uh, Dismas does with it. Salak has already won one match, so this is match point for Salak. If he wins, he moves forward in the tournament. He just gets to move forward, so that's going to be a big stab. Even with the Paranoid, still does enough damage. So now he drops to, to under 40 percent HP. Uh, the thing is, he still goes first by the start of next round, so he doesn't um, he doesn't use a heal here. I'm going to have to believe. And the thing is. That leper is gonna be very close to just dying after after he acts because he's gonna drop to like four HP. Oh, that's that's a bit premature. It's a bit premature because he was gonna be dropping to like four HP and 190 stress. So the fact that he just goes for that instead means that well, now he can get a solemnity after a heart attack and he's gonna be like pretty difficult to kill. Yeah, then there it is. <laughs> pretty difficult to kill. So he's taking minus stress right now on that leper, as well as, uh, you know, having having been reborn like a phoenix from the ashes, like just absolutely insane what, uh, what a leper solemnity crit looks like, just heal yourself for your entire HP bar, it's crazy. <laughs> Most of it is gone anyway, <laughs> because of that punish and the, and the panic darts though. <laughs> So that Jester does drop, um, no not the Jester, the Flash one does drop to 0 HP, but he still has 2 examinates. He could have missed that, he could have missed that. Oh that crit, oh that leper is, oh look, he's so close. 1 HP, 199 stress. Oh Jester, how could you. Paranoid little Jester, and this, and this was surrenders. GG, that is two wins going for Silac, I believe, so 
Silic one win and Silic two wins. So it's just this team gone. So both the flash wins were a win. So GG to both players. And I do believe, actually, that um, that is the last. Oh no no no! There's one more. There's one more for round one. There's one more match for round one. So let's report the scores. Silic is now two. Zero here, so unfortunately, Dismas is gone from the tournament. And up next is going to be Sergi versus IMPD.